Good evening, welcome to Oxford Stadium for more, more action in the Cab Direct Championship. It is the Oxford Cheaters against the Plymouth Gladiators. Less than a month to go in the regular league campaign, still a lot to sort out, but Oxford should be in the playoffs. It looks like them, Poole and Scunthorpe plus one more, certainly home form and aggregate points have the Cheaters well placed. And whilst they haven't actually won away yet, you have to say this could easily have done so on a number of occasions. In fact, they've come close in all four away matches so far, the latest being in the soup heat drama at Berwick on Saturday. As far as the other possible playoff contenders are concerned, well Plymouth are still mathematically in the race. It does appear to be a long shot because their away form has fallen off a cliff in recent weeks. The ongoing absence of Nico Cavati has been a massive issue and they made a team change last week which also raised a few eyebrows. Just the two league points on offer tonight. The reverse fixture was rained off last month. They'll try again at the Coliseum on August the 31st. Well, it's making their way round on parade round turns three and four. There's a healthy contingent of uh, Plymouth fans away up on uh, turn number three there, just in front of the Oxford Stadium sign. They've got the flags out as well. So good to see travelling support from the Coliseum here this evening. For a Plymouth side, as I say, they've had a tough time on the road in the last few weeks. Of course, uh, without Nico Cavati, he's only raced uh, three matches for them all season. And you can see uh, Jason Edwards, who is the guest at number one, walking around behind the uh, promoter. And manager Mark Phillips uh, on the right in the uh, blue jacket, Gary May, the team manager in front. Peter Stroit leading out the Oxford Cheaters as well round the start line here tonight. So on what's a, a breezy evening, we've had a little bit of rain also, uh, not nothing heavy at all, but a, a light uh, shower in the build-up to action here tonight. Track looks to be in decent condition and we do have a dry forecast for the remainder of the evening. So there shouldn't be any great concerns on that front. Oxford defending a, an unbeaten home record of 22 matches dating right back to the start of last season. They are super strong around here and they have been uh, certainly clocking in big numbers in the uh, really throughout the much of the campaign. Plymouth came close here early in the season in the BSN series but Oxford have been very strong on their home circuit for much of the campaign. Two teams checking out the start line area. So the riders will make their way towards their machines. The SCB referee Barbara Hawley is down at uh, trackside along with uh, Mick Postlewhite as well. And that's because we are marking some very sad news earlier this week. Yesterday the news, the tragic passing of SCB referee and FIM delegate Tony Steele who did so much for the sport on an admin front. Referee of uh, many Grand Prix's. Jury president did everything in the sport really, ACU and SCB wise. Very sad news indeed to hear of Tony's passing yesterday. So tribute is being paid now here at Oxford for Tony Steele. So riders and officials here paying tribute to Tony Seal and a life very well lived indeed in business and also in Speedway where he was uh, so involved in so many factors. 
Two team captains about to do the coin toss. Ben Barker for the Plymouth Gladiators, always in the thick of the action wherever he goes. And uh, Scott Nichols, of course, the Oxford Cheetahs captain alongside him. They will shortly do the, cost, the, uh, to the coin toss for gate positions here tonight. Plymouth beating Scunthorpe at home on Saturday, 46-43. Uh, followed a heavy defeat at the Eddie Wright Raceway 24 hours earlier. So they have been uh, scoring points at home, but they have found it much tougher on the road. And I think they'll find it tough here tonight against an Oxford side who have regularly been scoring in the mid-50s throughout the summer so far. And Scott Nichols, although he lost out in the superheat at Berwick on the Saturday, had piled up 17 points from six rides in that meeting prior to that race. And is still showing quite remarkable form for his uh, age and uh, his time of career, but uh, still going very strong indeed. Oxford, of course, still in the Knockout Cup as well this season, so plenty of racing to come because it looks like they should be in the playoffs. Here comes the coin toss. So Plymouth take one and three in heat one as Ben Barker wins the coin toss. And that gives Oxford choice in heat 15. So yes, looking at the, uh, the Oxford form this season at home in uh, league matches, uh, 53 against Redcar, 54 against Edinburgh, 55 against Scunthorpe, 57 v Workington, 53 against Berwick. The only outlier was the pool meeting, which of course finished 45 all and uh, went to a super hit, which Oxford won. But apart from that, very strong around their home track. Of course, they were really pushed by Plymouth here in the BSN series very early in the campaign, their first home meeting, which Oxford won 46-44, although many felt that it should have ended 45 all in that one as well, because there was a very close finish in Heat 15 where uh, Dan Thompson was challenging Scott Nichols, and uh, many felt from watching the replay that Dan Thompson had edged that, but it went the way of Scott Nichols, and so Oxford won it by a couple of points. But they have really grown in strength on their home track with the likes of Cameron Heaps and uh, Jordan Jenkins improving as the season has gone on, and the support for the top two of uh, Sam Marston and Scott Nichols has certainly been there. As far as Plymouth are concerned, one away win so far, that was at uh, Edinburgh in May, but some heavy recent defeats on the road at Scunthorpe, Poole and Glasgow. So let's take a look at tonight's team lineups then here at Calgary. The riders make their way onto their parade laps. Let's start off with the Monarch Oxford Cheetahs. And running at one, the very much informed of number one, that is Sam Masters, double figures in his last 10 Oxford matches. Number two, Cameron Heaps having a great season so far in the championship. Really a good foil to Sam Masters in those at number one and two positions. Riding out to number three, youngster Ashton Belgian having his first month in the main body of the team in the Cam Direct Championship. And his race partner at number four is Jordan Jenkins, also finding some form in the last few weeks. Highest score of the campaign, in fact, last time out here against Berwick when he scored 11. At number five, the captain, the very much evergreen Scott Nichols, who just keeps on winning races and scoring big points for the Cheetahs, and indeed still scoring well in the Premiership too in his regular guest bookings there. And two reserves for the Oxford Cheetahs. Number six is youngster Luke Killeen. And riding at number seven, coming in with Adam Royland still on the sidelines. Jody Scott once again is promoted from the Oxford Chargers. That's the Oxford lineup here at Sandy Lane tonight. Moving across to the Plymouth Gladiators, and Jason Edwards takes the guest booking at number one for the injured Nico Cavati. It's a very solid lineup elsewhere. Riding at number two is Alfie Botel, back with the Plymouth this year after a season last year with the Birmingham Brummies. Success story, definitely no question. Dan Thompson at number three, average up to 6.51. Really had a very strong season indeed. The new signing at number four is Patrick Bake. He has replaced Kyle Newman in the Plymouth side. It was certainly an interesting call they made last week. It's his third meeting in Plymouth Colours here tonight. Captain Ben Barker rides at five, very much a stalwart of the Plymouth team in recent years. So he goes at number five. And they could be strong at reserve. Certainly Joe Thompson sits in really good form, both for Plymouth and also guesting elsewhere in recent weeks. So he rides at six. And number seven, someone who knows this track very well indeed, because Jacob Hook has guested for Oxford on a couple of occasions this season. He rides at number seven. Gary May is the team manager. 
So Plymouth do mathematically have a chance of finishing in the top four with their matches in hand. It does appear to be a real long shot with their fixtures to come. They've got uh, some very tough home matches to come at the Coliseum Plymouth. They've still got to have uh, Poole, Oxford and Glasgow on their home track. And their away matches are at Redcar and Workington along with this one. And of course the Bears and the Comets are also in that big fight for fourth place. Which at the moment probably looks like it could edge towards Glasgow uh, on fixtures to come and the fact that uh, Redcar and Workington contrived to virtually split the points last week when they raced each other the, uh, they both had uh, one win apiece when they met last weekend and uh, that really didn't do a great deal of help to either side regardless of the aggregate point as well it actually moved Redcar into the top four with their uh, aggregate point from that uh, pair of meetings but they've only got two matches to come uh, Glasgow the team with uh, matches in hand outside the top four Oxford sat pretty in third place Paul of course way clear out in front they've yet to lose a, a league match all season the Pirates and as long as you count the super heat here as kind of a losing draw they are unbeaten over 15 races of meetings this season. And Paul do race Scunthorpe tonight. Scunthorpe in second place, four points behind. They race at Wimborne Road this evening. I won't give you the scores from that one because I'm aware that uh, meeting is on BSN. So you may be watching that one after uh, watching this one live. But they are currently in the top two places on 25 and 21 points respectively and Oxford currently on 18 points from 10 so uh, a win tonight uh, won't take them up any places but it will certainly solidify their position in the top four because it would open up a six point gap on the teams outside and they will be very strong favourites indeed to do that here with the top end power particularly provided by Sam Masters who goes in red in the opening race and Scott Nichols backed up by plenty of uh, decent home form riders. And talking of Sam Masters, he's only dropped uh, one point in his last three home matches. A 15 point maximum last time out here against the Berwick Bandits. Paid 14 at Shieldfield Park on Saturday as well. So Masters showing good form. Fast skating around this circuit as well. And he'll have the outside gate in the opening race. Partnered by Cameron Heaps, of course, paid maximum man last time out here against the Bandits too. It's Alfie Botel in yellow off the inside for the Gladiators. Cameron Heaps in blue off gate two for the Cheaters. Jason Edwards guesting in white off gate three. The uh, red car regular coming in for Nico Cavatti. And Sam Masters goes in red off the outside. That's the lineup for the opening race here at Cowley. Referee is uh, Barbara Hawley this evening. And the uh, clock counting down with around uh, 20 seconds to go before action here in the Cab Direct Championship. Sam Marshall gets the riders into the line, waiting with Cameron Heaps there off gate two. He is there now, so Botel on the inside. Botel, in fact, pulling away slightly. He needs to get himself ready in time, or he'll find himself disqualified. Green light comes off the opening race, and away they go. It's a sharp start by Cameron Heaps off gate two, and Masters comes across from the outside. And Sam Masters gets the advantage here over Edwards in second, Heaps in third with Botel out the back. Oxford on a 4-2 in the opening race, but Heaps trying to turn back through on the inside, trying to get himself alongside Edwards going into lap number two. Masters doing it from the outside gate. He's out in front. Second place is Edwards. So it's Heaps taking plenty of speed into bench three and four. And can Heaps make it all the way around the outside? Seen plenty of outside action around Cowley this season. And Cameron Heaps has certainly got plenty of pace here as he tries to reel in Jason Edwards. Masters well out in front. He's away and gone. But Heaps really throwing it into bench three and four. Edwards rides the inside line defensively. Maintains that second place for now. But Cameron Heaps will have one last go on the last lap. It's Masters from Edwards. Heaps in third place. Both Tell out the back and again Heaps will fling it into the top turn trying to come around the outside clear win for Sam Masters Edwards looking inside in fact Cameron Heaps was going around the outside but Edwards still managed to hang on for second place Heaps couldn't quite make it through Oxford open up with a 4-2 in the first race clear victory for Sam Masters from the outside it looked like Cameron Heaps made a good jump too off uh, gate two, but uh, Edwards was there, managed to split the home combination, and then a good defensive ride by the Plymouth guest riding at number one tonight to get second place. But Sam Masters maintains his winning ways around the Oxford Stadium. He is the winner of the opening race. Masters takes it. Second place, uh, Jason Edwards. Third, Cameron Heaps. 4-2 there in favour of the Monarch Oxford Cheaters. Sam Masters making his way 
back to the pits, gets the applause of uh, team manager Peter Schroek and also uh, Scott Nichols down there for a quick word on track conditions. And now the Oxford captain going across to young reserve Jody Scott who comes in at number seven. Obviously news early this week that uh, Henry Atkins won't be returning this season or indeed uh, any time because he's uh, retired from the sport. So the Cheetahs brought in Adam Roynan as initially a 28-day replacement. Of course, he got injured in his very first meeting back in that crash at uh, Redcar, ironically, when Jody Scott lifted in front of him. So Jody Scott has been uh, taking a couple of guest bookings along the way, but whether they'll look to try and make some other move in that department, we'll have to wait and see. Obviously, a 75% point of fixtures is approaching for the Cheetahs. And uh, this will be interesting tonight. If there have been nights here around Cowley when Oxford Reserves have had absolute domination. Well, tonight, the way the Plymouth team is uh, set up, they could uh, certainly pose some questions for the Oxford Reserves. Across the lineup then for heat number two. Luke Killeen rides in red off the inside. Joe Thompson in white off gate two. Jody Scott in blue off gate three. And Jacob Hook in yellow off the outside. And Joe Thompson is certainly a rider to watch. He scored paid 12 here in the BSM meeting back in April. Uh, it's also made several guest appearances here for the likes of the Bellic Bandits last time out and the Pool Pirates. And he scored 11 at uh, Plymouth on Saturday. So Joe Thompson in white is a rider in form and Jacob Hook in yellow has made two recent guest appearances for the Cheetahs as well. So plenty of uh, recent track experience amongst these Plymouth riders. And Oxford will be looking to uh, Luke Killeen to make a big start here from the inside in heat two. Jody Scott, who's just back from a, a brief injury absence, missed the Chargers fixture at uh, Middlesbrough a few weeks ago. He comes there into line in blue. So Killeen off the inside, Joe Thompson gate two. Scott gate three, and Hook off the outside, and Joe Thompson makes a lovely start there from gate two. And Jacob Hook in yellow tries to go around the outside, but Killeen gets in between. So Thompson gets the advantage with Killeen in second place, Hook in third with Scott at the back. And Joe Thompson is a rider with plenty of confidence at the moment, really did drop neatly off gate two there to get the advantage. Down at the back has gone Jody Scott, and the bike is uh, spinning around. The uh, rider is trying to clear the track. We'll have to wait and see if the referee puts the reds on. The race continues and Scott clears the track. And meanwhile, Luke Killian tries to come through on the inside, but clamped off by Joe Thompson on turns one and two. Good race on here at the front with Thompson having the advantage. Killian with speed in second place, trying to make a passing move. He's trying to go around the outside. Thompson keeps it really tight there, then swings out wide off the bend. And Joe Thompson still race leads here from Luke Killian with Jacob Hook in third place and Joe Thompson's controlled this pretty neatly because Luke Killian's been buzzing around behind him throughout the four laps but Thompson comes off the final bend to win it for the Gladiators. It's Joe Thompson there over Luke Killeen with Jacob Hook in third place and Jody Scott falling at the start of lap two and actually did well to clear the track because the bike was spinning around around him not like it might land on him at one point but he managed to walk away with no damage done and the Plymouth Gladiators level the scores with that 4-2 there in heat number two. It's a good ride by uh, Joe Thompson to win it. Second place was Luke Killeen. Third Jacob Hook with Jody Scott failing to finish. 4-2 in favour of the Gladiators and progressively now Oxford 6 Plymouth 6 after two races. Always felt the Plymouth reserves could have some joy here tonight certainly with the current form being shown by Joe Thompson and Heat 3 will be seeing his brother Dan Thompson the rider in white there is Jordan Jenkins being pushed off towards the start line for Heat 3 Jenkins partnered by Ashton Belgian for the Monocoques for Cheetahs here Dan Thompson will ride in white and the rider in yellow is Patrick Bake the newcomer the 22 year old Dane for the Gladiators it was quite a move when they released Carl Newman pretty harsh it would appear on, on Newman and uh, Bake they've said is a rider they're looking at for the future recommended by Bjarni Pedersen Dan Thompson in white off the inside Jordan Jenkins in blue off gate 2 Patrick Bake in yellow off gate 3 and Ashton Belgian in red off the outside so into line for hate 3 Certainly Carl Newman was having a, an inconsistent season, particularly away from home. He wasn't scoring that many points. But it is very hard for riders who are only doing the one league 
see the likes of Alfie Botello had a great season last year with uh, with Birmingham but uh, eventually it does tend to uh, to catch up when you're only doing maybe one meeting every couple of weeks against riders who are racing three times a week and that was probably the, the main issue for for Carl Newman but it was a, a surprise when Plymouth chose to make that move last week to release him and bring in a Danish newcomer who struggled at Scunthorpe mind you the whole Scunthorpe the whole Plymouth team struggled at Scunthorpe last Friday he did pick up three page four on his home debut and of course the Coliseum will have been a very different experience for him as well a tight circuit indeed down there in Devon so here we go with heat number three. Dan Thompson white off the inside. Jordan Jenkins in blue off gate two. Patrick Bacon yellow off gate three. And Ashton Belgian red off the outside. They go away with heat three. Dan Thompson makes a really good one there in white from the inside. Lee Jenkins into the turn. Here comes Patrick Bacon around the outside. And Jenkins will try and make it three. And perhaps there into the third bend. Really tight going in. Dan Thompson's got the advantage. Patrick Bacon racing around the outside. Trying to get past Jenkins. Again, he's cut off by the Oxford man. But Plymouth here on a 4-2 in heat three. Which would give them the early advantage because Ashton Belgian missed out there from the outside gate and Dan Thompson who has gone well here so far this season really enjoys the circuit rides it well he leads uh, Jordan Jenkins and Patrick Bank with a good ride in third place so far he's coming under pressure now though from Ashton Belgian for first spot with just over a lap to go Belgian's going to go wide here on the top turn trying to sweep round the outside to be fair Baker's read that superbly and blocked out Belgian it's Thompson well clear of Jenkins out in front the battle is still on here for third place with Bake just holding Belgian at bay into the third bend they go for the final time chance of Belgian around the outside here because Bake was a bit slow going in win for Thompson second for Jenkins and Belgian does get round the outside there of Patrick Bake you can see that coming on the top turn Patrick Baker had ridden well there for the majority of that race, but he just was a bit slow going into the bend there, and that offered a chance for Ashton Belgian round the outside, which he took, uh, saving a 3-3 there for the Oxford Cheetahs in heat number three. But there's what certainly no doubt is the race victory for Dan Thompson. That was an impressive ride by him. Jordan Jenkins in second, Ashton Belgian in third place, and that's a shared heat, which maintains the level score so far. It's Oxford 9, Plymouth 9. It looked quite promising for Plymouth in the early stages there because uh, Bank made a good start as well as Thompson who really dropped off the inside neatly. But the Oxford boys coming through, Jordan Jenkins on the first turn got through into second place, Ashton Bowden chasing hard in the end making it round the outside for the uh, third place, the paid second place there to make it nine points all. Plymouth have uh, yet to win here at Oxford since the Cheetahs came back into racing back in 2022. They've made five appearances here. They've lost all five, but they did come close in the BSN I mentioned earlier this season. In the league match here last season, Oxford won 59-31, so that was a big, big home win. Ironically, uh, Jason Edwards was guesting for Plymouth in that fixture, as he does so again here tonight. And the two-minute warning comes on for Heat 4, featuring uh, there the two senior riders, Scott Nichols in red and Ben Barker in white. And also in this one, Joji Scott and Jacob Hook. And Ben Barker there, the rider in white, never short of a bit of controversy. Was certainly involved in plenty of drama across the weekend at uh, Scunthorpe on Friday. Had a bit of a spat with Jay Cannon. But to be fair, the rider of Ben Barker to uh, produce a strong first bend didn't appear to be an awful lot in that um, but then on Saturday Ben Barker found himself disqualified from a race for stopping the race on the track when he was uh, clobbered by Connor Mountain in that race earlier Jacob Hookman goes in uh, yellow off the inside for the Gladiators Jody Scott in blue off gate 2 Ben Barker in white off gate 3 Scott Nichols in red off the outside just the referee was not terribly impressed by all accounts with uh, Ben Barker uh, taking matters into his own hands on Saturday and a bit of action in the pits afterwards but uh, Plymouth did come through to win that meeting against Gunthorpe 46-43 there's normally some action on track when Ben Barker is about nine points apiece after three races here And certainly the pre-meeting expectations that the Thompson twins could be
key factors in the meeting. Well, they have certainly come to fruition so far, with both of them being early race winners for the Plymouth Gladiators. Jacob Hook off the inside in yellow. Jody Scott in blue off gate two. Ben Barker in white off gate three. Scott Nichols in red off the outside. Nine points all. Here we go with heat four. Away from the start. Nice start by Killian. In fact, has come in for Jody Scott. So Killian has the advantage around the outside. And turning through is Scott Nichols. Scott Nichols gets inside. Jacob Hook on the bend. Ben Barker got squeezed out. And this change appears to be working as far as the... Oxford team are concerned as Luke Killeen leads here from Scott Nichols with Jacob Hook in third place and Ben Barker out the back and super stuff there on the first turn. Killeen coming into good effect. Scott Nichols coming through on the first lap. Oxford on a 5 1 here in heat four. Killeen with the advantage then. Second place is his teammate Scott Nichols. Third is Jacob Hook. Ben Barker out the back. Looks like being a good one here for the Cheaters. Killing look over it to the inside. Scott Nichols was flying around the outside. Now drops back inside him on the final lap. And the substitution here in heat four. Certainly working ones as far as the Cheaters are concerned. Uh, Luke Killing rides four perfect laps to take that one. His teammate Scott Nichols in second place. Third is Jacob Hook and Ben Barker out the back. And Oxford make the breakthrough there in heat four with a 5 1. And Luke Killeen coming in to replace Jody Scott. That has uh, been a big move by Peter Schroek early in the meeting, making that switch, and it works out very well indeed. He absolutely jumped off the start there off gate number two, allowing Scott Nichols to do the work there on turns one and two. And they were away for maximum points, the first 5 1 of the meeting. Celebrations then from the home crowd, the home riders, as Luke Killeen wins heat number four. Second place, Scott Nichols. Third, Jacob Hook. Ben Barker at the back. And Oxford get the first 5-1 of the meeting. They lead now by 14 points to 10. Home riders back to the pits after a great ride there by Luke Killeen and a good uh, typical First Ben coming through there by Scott Nichols to make sure that he was able to join him. We've seen lots of track craft by Scott Nichols so far this season around this circuit. So here's the score so far. 14 points for the Oxford Cheaters. Luke Killeen contributing five of them with that victory in Heat 4. Helping also a race win for Sam Masters in the opening race. Two Heat winners so far for the Cheaters. And as far as the Gladiators are concerned, uh, the Thompson boys have been doing the business. So Dan Thompson, the uh, winner. Joe Thompson, the winner of, of heat number two. And then uh, followed up by uh, Dan Thompson, the winner of heat number three. But a uh, blow for them, conceding maximum points there in heat number four. So we're about to have our first track grading break of the uh, evening. Uh, track grading and possibly a bit of watering as well. And with four hits gone, Oxford lead Plymouth by 14 points to 10. More action coming shortly. So about to resume racing here at the Oxford uh, Stadium. Oxford Cheaters lead Plymouth Gladiators by 14 points to 10 after four races so far. Just have the track grading and uh, watering. Riders just uh, having a look at what's been done. Ashton Badger will be out in heat uh, five. The Plymouth Gladiators are already on board their machinery. Jason Edwards and Alfie Botel. And uh, Jordan Jenkins making his way onto the circuit as well. Two minute warning from the referee. So that 5 1 in heat four with uh, Luke Killing coming in to replace Jody Scott and Scott Nichols joining him. Actually ended a run of success. Well, it wasn't, didn't end a run of success, but it ended a nice stat as far as Scott Nichols is concerned because Scott Nichols had won heat four in his previous eight matches for the Oxford Cheaters. Not a deal complain about the paid win there after the. Uh, Big start by Luke Killeen. But certainly Scott Nichols making fast starts to meetings. Home and away for the Oxford Cheaters. Here we go then with Heat 5, which sees Ashton Belgian riding in right off the inside for the Oxford Cheaters. Alfie Botel in yellow off gate 2 is just restarting his bike after it uh, lost power at the start line. Jordan Jenkins is in blue off gate 3, and Jason Edwards goes in white off the outside. Heat 5, 14 10 in favour of the Cheaters. Edwards run a second place in his first ride, splitting uh, Sam Masters and Cameron Heaps, but Botel was in last place in that race. 
he'll be looking for a, a better start here from gate two. So Ashton Bowger taking his time with a bit of work at the start, as is uh, Jason Edwards on the outside. They have 35 seconds to go on the clock. The start marshal will be looking to call them in. This is Oxford's penultimate regular season home match. They have Glasgow to come here in a fortnight's time. Busy month of away matches too for the Cheetahs. He finds them at the start line. Green line comes on, really short holding the way they go at this time. A much better start that time by Alfie Botel gets in front of Ashton Belgian and coming through here, Jason Edwards trying to go in between. He's done so. What a good ride by Edwards, but to Jenkins keeps it rolling around the outside on turns three and four. Full start by Botel. Botel race lead for Plymouth. Jenkins in second. Edwards trying to turn back in third. A great move there by Jenkins to come through on the inside, but ridden out by Botel. Neck and neck into bed three. Jenkins almost loses control, locks up, and through on the inside goes Edwards takes the second place but back comes Jenkins once again Jenkins barging hard inside Edwards he'll try and turn back off the second turn great action here in heat five and Jenkins recovering himself to move back into second place but while that's been going on Alfie hotel has been going clear Jenkins in second place Edwards in third with Belgium out the back and Plymouth here looks out for a 4-2 in the eventful heat five with Botel making the start Jenkins trying to come in one more time on the final turn but it will be a victory for Alfie Botel, second place Jordan Jenkins, third Jason Edwards with Ashton Belgian out the back. That was pretty eventful stuff. Jordan Jenkins almost turned himself inside out on uh, Ben Four at the uh, end of lap two. But here's the race winner, Alfie Botel, holding on out in front, did really well from the gate, fended off for Jenkins in the early stages. And briefly, Jason Edwards coming back through for the second before he was uh, repassed by Jenkins who had an exciting race there in heat five and the outcome is a 4-2 to the Plymouth Gladiators who narrow the gap to a couple of points. Botel winning heat five, second place at Jenkins third, Edwards 4-2 to Plymouth, it's now Oxford 16, Plymouth 14. Well, that was certainly eventful stuff there with uh, Edwards and Jenkins and Botel all getting involved. I thought at one point that uh, Jenkins was going to go down on the uh, top turn on the uh, turn four as he uh, overlocked, but he recovered and then uh, managed to make it back through on the inside of uh, Jason Edwards. So Oxford's lead down to two points. Plymouth doing a good containing job so far. But this one will be interesting with Sam Masters and Cameron Heaps. It's been a, such a strong combination for the Cheetahs for the majority of the campaign. They raced together four times against Berwick here a fortnight ago. They got four five ones in those races. They are up against Ben Barker and Joe Thompson in this race. Ben Barker failing to score from his first ride. He's been riding for much of the campaign, I think, through the pain barrier after various injury ailments. Joe Thompson, of course, winning his first ride. So Ben Barker in white off the inside. Sam Masters red off gate two. Joe Thompson yellow off gate three. Cameron Heaps in blue off the outside. Has been a good season for Cameron Heaps. In his average in the programme, his green sheet is 6.2, but in real terms this season he's 6.65. Didn't have a great one at Berwick at the weekend, but uh, generally has been very, very consistent indeed. And that will be all important when it comes to playoff time because the one thing that Oxford know is if they're going to win the Cap Direct Championship, well, the likelihood is they're going to have to get past Paul to do so. And Paul do tend to hold things tight when they come to this circuit. The interesting test next Wednesday when Oxford go to Paul in a league match. And Paul, of course, are, are pretty much as strong at home or as Oxford have been a couple of years since they lost at home, the Pirates. So... Oxford will need to go there and, and uh, lay down some sort of statement of intent. And they have further away matches to come at uh, Glasgow and then Scunthorpe and Plymouth uh, across a couple of days at the end of August. So some uh, interesting away matches to come for Peter Shrokes and I, who have been doing pretty well with aggregate points this season, but that'll be a tough one at Paul next week because it was 45 all from the reverse fixture here at Cowley. Heat 6 then, 16 points to 14. Ben Barker off the inside in white. Sam Masters red off gate 2. Joe Thompson yellow off 3. Cameron Heaps in blue off the outside. There is still an issue here with the starting tapes, so the riders being asked to 
pull back. Just so whilst they sort that out. And uh, I think some assistance here is required. So the riders will get some bonus time to uh, prepare themselves. But they were asked to move away from the start line. Two minutes uh, warning is still flashing, but the uh, time has expired, long since expired, but uh, you can't blame the riders for that. So hopefully they'll get that issue sorted pretty quickly out of the tapes. The uh, bike's revving away. Uh, I think that is now sorted. So into line four, heat six, Ben Barker on the inside. Sam Masters, gate two, Joe Thompson, gate three, Cameron Heaps off the outside. Oxford lead by two points, heat six gets underway. Better start by Barker, but a good one by Masters. Masters gets above Barker. Heaps will try and go around the outside, but Barker gets in between them. It's Masters from Barker, and Barker thought about the inside there. Clamped off by Masters, and that allows the run around the outside by Heaps. Textbook stuff there by the Oxford Cheaters. Masters covering off Barker. Heaps going around the outside, and Oxford have one and two here in heat six with Sam Masters out in front. Cameron Heaps in second place, Ben Barker in third, and Joe Thompson at the back. And you could just see Ben Barker having a nibble there at Sam Masters going into Ben three. But he was closed down by the Oxford number one and Cameron Hips read that he took the run around the outside joined his teammate out in front and looks like being a second 5-1 in three races here for the Oxford Cheaters uh, Sam Masters leads on to his last lap Cameron Hips in second place Ben Barker in third Joe Thompson out the back not having the impact he had in heat two in this race so this uh, so strong combination will record another 5-1 Masters penalty inside off the final Ben Masters wins it second place Heaps third Barker at the back uh, Joe Thompson and a frustrating one there for the Gladiators but a good one for the Oxford Cheaters these two do ride well together and Sam Masters there covering off Ben Barker tried it on Ben two Barker just got in between but then on Ben three Barker again stuck his nose into the third Ben on the inside of Sam Masters who had him covered off and Cameron Heaps knew that was coming and he roared around the outside double wheelies for the Oxford one and two and it is a 1-2 for the Cheaters in Heat 6, which opened up a six-point advantage. Sam Masters winning Heat 6, second place Cameron Heaps, third Ben Barker, and it's Oxford 21, Plymouth 15. So that gets the Cheaters with a, a decent advantage, really, for the first time tonight. They were four points in front after Heat 4, but they were pegged back by a 4-2 in Heat 5. But they get themselves 5-1 from heat 6 to go 6 in front. Obviously, the Gladiators can use a attack sub. But it looks like that won't be happening anytime soon. It looks like uh, Jody Scott will be going in blue in this race. By the fact that uh, Luke Killeen there, you can see, walking back into the pits with uh, no helmet colour on. So Jody Scott coming in here. To team up with... Scott Nichols and it's Dan Thompson and Patrick Bate going for the Gladiators. We're just waiting for the two minute warning to go on. There's no two on the trot here, so should be fairly uh, fairly soon before should be too long before that uh, takes place. Mark Phillips, the Plymouth promoter, coming out for a word with his uh, new recruit. I mentioned before, Heat uh, 3 was uh, recommended by former Plymouth rider Bjarni Pedersen. Real learning curve coming in at this stage of the campaign. Some new tracks to get his head around as well. And there was a two-minute warning for Heat 7. So the riders uh, make their way round to the start line. Dan Thompson there, the rider in white, has made a real step up this season, despite uh, shoulder trouble, he's had a couple of times, but he's uh, stepped himself up to pretty much heat leader level now in the championship. Such a shame for him that the, he had that crash in the SON2 at uh, Bellevue, because that could have been gold for Great Britain in that meeting. So Scott Nichols rides in red off the inside. Dan Thompson in white off gate two. Jody Scott comes in in blue off gate three. And Patrick Bake in yellow off the outside. And just think back to that race back in April when, uh, when Dan Thompson 
so nearly past Scott Nichols. Well, many felt that he had passed Scott Nichols uh, on the line. It wasn't given that way. He had beaten him earlier in the meeting, actually, as well. And one thing is, uh, you know, with Dan Thompson, he's got excellent track craft. He put the bike in the right place, which you have to have to beat Scott Nichols around here, which not many do. So it will be interesting to see if Dan Thompson makes the gate here off, uh, off gate two. Can he get himself above Scott Nichols? Or will Nichols make it from the inside? 21 points to 15 in Oxford's favour. Nichols on the inside gate. Dan Thompson at gate two. Jody Scott gate three. And Patrick Bake off the outside. So Oxford are six points in front. Let me go with eight number seven. Green lights on and away they go. Mechanical failure for Jody Scott. Good start by Scott Nichols. Out gates Dan Thompson who tries to get around the outside. Bake is there too. Lifting on the second turn. But Nichols here with the advantage. Dan Thompson chops back for the inside trying to make a line. But Scott Nichols gets a fast one around the outside. He pulls clear. Second place is Dan Thompson. Third Patrick Bay. Looks like being a shared heat in, in heat seven because Jody Scott had a tough night so far. Falling on the second lap of heat two. And now pushing the bike across the centre green after mechanical failure on the start line. And Scott Nichols got the gate there over Dan Thompson. Just made it from gate one over the Plymouth Rider. And now stretching his way clear up the back straight and in control of heat seven. The Oxford captain well out in front and still going very strong indeed. Scott Nichols race leads onto his last lap. He was immense at Berwick on Saturday. And that uh, super heat battle with Drew Kemp and Lewis Kerr didn't quite work out in the end for him. But he's winning for fun here again in heat seven. Scott Nichols takes it over Dan Thompson with uh, Patrick Bake in third place. And a frustration for Jody Scott, whose machine gave up on the way on the uh, start line as the tapes went up. Win for Scott Nichols, who is two rides unbeaten so far here this evening as the Cheaters maintain their six-point advantage and a routine race victory there in Heat 7. Scott Nichols, the winner of that one. Dan Thompson in second place. Patrick Bake in third. The 3-3 makes it Oxford 24. Plymouth 18 with seven races gone. Taking a look at the score charts so far this evening. So we approach the halfway point of the meeting with the Cheetahs six points in front and Sam Masters unbeaten so far with six out of six two race wins and the other unbeaten rider is the captain Scott Nichols with five paid six from two rides. And moving across to the Plymouth uh, Gladiators, uh, Jason Edwards contributing three as guest at number one. But uh, Dan Thompson, top scorer so far, a win and a second place, five points for him. Also race wins for Alfie Botel and for Joe Thompson. So six points is the lead for the Cheetahs, 24-18 at this stage. We approach the halfway point and we go into our second uh, track grading break of the evening. So the tractor about to come on the circuit. It's Oxford 24, Plymouth 18, and more action coming shortly. So back here at Oxford Stadium, seven heats gone. Oxford lead Plymouth by 24 points to 18. We await the riders on track for heat eight, but there will be a change on the Oxford side. Luke Killeen coming in to replace uh, Jody Scott. So Peter Shorek once again, making that switch and obviously he he wanted uh, Killeen to have the inside gate in heat two uh, but then he clearly wants to uh, partner Jody Scott with Scott Nichols for his remaining two rides in the meeting especially against the Plymouth side who do score down the order with strong reserves as we know always going to be a hard step up for Jody Scott tonight when compared to for example the Workington meeting um, when he did score decent points at reserve but doesn't underline that it, it's a position that Oxford will have to look at as we come towards the uh, business part of the season will they try and look to sign a replacement if Adam Royden is not fit to come back at this stage because that could be all important come the end of the season. Heat 8 then at the start line and it will be Luke Killeen going in blue off the inside. Jacob Hook in yellow off gate 2. Cameron Heaps in red off gate 3. And Alfie Botel winner last time out. He goes in white off the outside. So in the way the Plymouth side is built you can expect them to remain in a meeting such as this for a while. The gap is 6 points. You do get the feeling that uh, when it comes towards the end the Oxford big guns from what we've seen so far we expect to have too much firepower. But there's no doubt that Oxford will be looking to build up a decent lead here because the Coliseum is a, a tough place to go 
for the aggregate point. So here we go for Heat 8, 24 18. Just once uh, Luke Killeen's got the bike pointing in the general direction of the first bend, we'll be able to get going. 17 seconds to go on the clock. Killeen on the inside, hook on gate two, heaps on gate three, hotel outside. Heat 8 gets underway. Good start by Killeen from the inside and going with him there is Cameron Heaps, Oxford here, one and two, Cameron Heaps in red, now look at this run round the outside by Alfie Botel, can he get round Killeen on the top turn and will the Oxford boys manage to squeeze him out, very tight off the bank as Hook coming through as well, lead being held by Cameron Heaps but strap on for second, third and fourth, it looks like Botel's gone second and Jacob Hook will try and get the better of Luke Killeen, Killeen back round him though into the third bend and Luke Killeen so far maintains the third place so Cameron Heaps racing clear, Second is Botel, third is Killeen. Jacob Hook was mighty close there to going over the infield on the exit of Ben 4. He's backing away here with Luke Killeen for the third place. He's trying to go wide now on turns three and four. They're looking for a turn back on the Oxford Reserve. He's well clear. Second place is Botel. The fight is still on here for the odd point with Jacob Hook flinging it all in, trying to get back around the outside of Luke Killeen. Killeen maintains that third place though for the Cheaters. Goes a bit wide off the bend. It's a clear win for Cameron Heaps. Second place goes to Alfie Botel and Luke Killeen in third. And just about stays on the bike after the end of the race as he uh, threw it into Ben 1 after the checkered flag there. Oxford get a 4 2 out of 8 8. That's a good result for them in a. Uh, any second string come reserves race Plymouth would hope to get points out of but Cameron Heaps the man for the occasion there in Heat 8 took control with the start good one also by Luke Killeen from the inside and Oxford maintain or extend their lead I should say to 8 points after 8 races Cameron Heaps the winner of Heat 8 second Alfie Botel third good ride from Luke Killeen to beat Jacob Hook and the 4-2 there makes it Oxford 28 Plymouth 20 So riders on their way out for Heat 9. We await when Gary May will make his move tactically, which he would suggest at some stage will be an extra ride for, for Dan Thompson. Oxford boys making their way round to the start line. Ashton Belgian and Jordan Jenkins for Heat 9. And it should be Ben Barker. I think it might be Dan Thompson in yellow here. Just looking over the, uh, over the pits. So it could be a change here for the Plymouth Gladiators. Just going to say that uh, Dan Thompson is the obvious choice as the tax sub, the way he's been going. And you would suggest that, uh, or that even with, with Joe Thompson being pulled out here, he could well gain a ride or two later on at reserve. So uh, tactically, this would uh, make sense as far as the Gladiators are concerned. And Dan Thompson comes into line here as a tax sub in yellow off the outside. That is confirmed. So, line up then for... 8-9, revised with Jordan Jenkins in blue off the inside. Ben Barker in white off gate 2. Ashton Bowden in red off gate 3. And taking a tax sub ride, Dan Thompson replacing his brother Joe. He'll go off the outside gate here in the yellow helmet colour. 28 points to 20. And what Plymouth could really do here is Ben Barker to make the start here over Jordan Jenkins. Jenkins has had decent speed so far this evening two second places, all action stuff along the way, but what uh, Plymouth will want is Barker to make the start, giving the uh, the outside run here for Dan Thompson see if he can get clear on this tax sub ride we've yet to see a, a blistering start by Ashton Bowden so far here this evening that'll be a good time for him to do it as far as Oxford are concerned so interesting heat nine here in prospect with the tax sub in play Jenkins in blue off the inside. Barker coming into the line eventually in white off gate two. Belgium red gate three. Dan Thompson in yellow off the outside. Heat nine gets underway. And Jenkins out gates Barker, but Dan Thompson comes across from the outside. And Dan Thompson makes it all the way from four and gets in front of Jordan Jenkins. Great ride by Dan Thompson. Jenkins in second place. Barker in third over Belgium. And Plymouth here on a 4 2 in heat nine. What can Jordan Jenkins do up against Dan Thompson? Can he get past the Plymouth tactical substitute on the second lap? Dan Thompson with the advantage 
Jenkins in second, Barker in third over Belgian, but the race is on here out in front with Jordan Jenkins trying to reel in ground. We have seen this season so far on this circuit, Dan Thompson is very hard to pass, he puts the bike in good places, he goes wide off Ben 2, Jenkins almost came alongside him, but to Thompson pulled it clear again off the uh, back straight, and Dan Thompson race leads onto his final lap, but Barker checking over his shoulder in third place because Belgian is trying to make a move too, Belgian tried to run hard into Ben's 1 and 2, but Barker covered him off, and Plymouth here should get a 4-2 from this tax sub as Dan Thompson comes round to win it. Second is Jordan Jenkins and Barker will hang on for third there against Belgian and the 4-2 goes the Gladiators way to cut the gap back down to six points. That was a good move by Gary May, the right time to do it. Jordan Jenkins is frustrated. He runs a second place for the third time so far tonight. But you have to give it there to Dan Thompson with that uh, ride around the outside from gate four, making it around the field on the first lap. And Dan Thompson is the winner of heat nine for the Gladiators. Second place, Jordan Jenkins for the Oxford Cheaters. And the third place goes to Ben Barker. And that means that with nine heats gone, the 4-2 to the Gladiators makes it Oxford 30, Plymouth 24. Dan Thompson getting a big cheer from the Gladiators fans on turn three. And there will be a bit of extra time allowed now because he has two rides on the trot with that tack sub. Peter Shrike chatting with uh, Jamie Courtney in the pits, looking at their own moves. Obviously, there has to be one more ride for Jody Scott on the Oxford team. He's programmed to go in heat 12 against the Thompson Twins. But whether that switches to heat 11 when... Uh, Scott Nichols in that race. We'll have to wait and see. And uh, entirely possible that uh, Plymouth could give Joe Thompson more rides. Only had one, so uh, only had two so far. Was a convincing winner of uh, Heat uh, Two. Looks like Jamie Corner's enjoying the music anyway. But so far on the Plymouth side. Dan Thompson with the two race wins and uh, Botel and Joe Thompson have also picked up victories. There's going to be no, no change on the Gladiator side in heat 10. You can see Patrick Bank there in yellow on track and ready. Sam Master chatting with Scott Nichols. They of course will be the Oxford combination for the championship pairs here next Friday. Big meeting at Cowley. Good lineup in prospect with all nine championship clubs represented. And hopefully not a blistering hot forecast this year, because that obviously makes life a lot easier as far as uh, track prep is concerned. I remember last year's meeting in the championship pairs, there was a bit of controversy over track conditions. There were some riders, mentioning no names, who were not too keen on conditions. But uh, towards the end, uh, riders such as Chris Harris and others uh, proved exactly how raceable it was. And we saw some fabulous pairs action towards the end, with uh, Harris and Basso eventually winning it for Glasgow supposed to be Harris and Steve Worrell for Glasgow this season. And of course, Steve Worrell's been on, on the sidelines in recent weeks due to illness. So hopefully he'll be back in time for that meeting. But it's a really good lineup, And there's no doubt that uh, Masters and Nichols, who didn't do this meeting uh, last year when uh, Lewis Kerr was partnered uh, by Sam Masters, no doubt that that Oxford combination of Masters and Nichols will be seen as one of the big favourites, if not the big favourites, for the meeting. But it uh, does, of course, come down to one race at, well, one semi final and then a final at the end. Well, you have to make sure no mistakes are made. But of course, they have had so many big results here this season in heats 13 and 15. That they have to be amongst the. Uh, the favourites. There is Patrick Bake making his way onto the circuit for heat 10 with the two minute warning on. The extra time has been allowed. Dan Thompson has two rides on the trot. There are the Gladiators Bar Bandits who have uh, made the trip to support the, uh, the Plymouth Gladiators here this evening. Good to see because uh, obviously travelling support is not what it used to be. And there's so many long trips in the championship. If you feel you're Plymouth, anyone's a long trip, really. But uh, this is one of the more local ones. Really, they have Oxford and Poole. And then everything else in the north. So, a night out for them. And so far, their team doing okay. Six down. Cameron Heaps in blue off the inside. Heat 10. Patrick Bacon, yellow off gate 2. Sam Masters in red off gate 3. Dan Thompson 
in white off the outside. Heat and rider we're waiting to come into line. One minute to go on the clock. Bike has fired up. He's on his way around. And I wouldn't mind betting that Dan Thompson will be a rider in demand next season. We've seen for a couple of years Thompson twins both uh, trying to make it, being in and out of certain teams for various reasons. But uh, I think that uh, Dan Thompson in particular will be a rider who many will want to see in their lineup in 2025 at both levels Premiership and Championship. And his brother also making good, uh, good strides in the last month or so. But a tough one here for. Dan Thompson off the outside once again, but this time against the Masters Heaps combination. It's a stronger, stronger lineup here for Oxford than it was in Heat 9. So can Dom Dan Thompson do the same here? Heaps on the inside, Bacon Gate 2, Masters Gate 3. Dan Thompson on the outside. Oxford lead by six points. Here we go with Heat 10. And it's a good start by Masters from three, and he'll block the run there of Thompson. He'll try and turn back off the second bend. He turns inside Sam Masters. He goes round the outside of Cameron Heaps. Fabulous first up there from Dan Thompson to hit the front. And now what can Sam Masters do? Try and pass him. He'll try and turn back for the inside, but Dan Thompson has the advantage. Second place, Sam Masters. Third, Cameron Heaps also coming through as Patrick Beck trying to put a challenge in. But Dan Thompson here leads from Sam Masters. Third place, Cameron Heaps. At the moment, the Plymouth man set for his third win of the meeting, but Sam Masters is right there with him. Can he make a passing move? Dan Thompson is wide off Ben 2, but gets plenty of speed there. Masters in second, Heaps in third, and Dan Thompson pulls away there from Sam Masters on lap three, and he race leads now onto his final lap. Thompson from Masters, Heaps in third, back in the back, Masters pins it tight on turns one and two, but there's good speed around the outside from Dan Thompson. Into men three and four for the final time, and that is a quite brilliant ride by Dan Thompson to win each 10 over Sam Masters with Cameron Heaps in third place for a 3 3. Brilliant, brilliant first bend by Dan Thompson. He didn't make the start that time as he had in Heat 9, but he got in between, he got inside Sam Masters on turn two, and then went round the outside of Cameron Heaps. Brilliant victory, just underlining the progress Dan Thompson's made in the last year or so. He's got 11 points now from four rides, and he clearly loves this circuit. Dan Thompson wins Heat 10, second Sam Masters, third Cameron Heaps, shared Heat, and it's now 33 points to 27 in favour of the Monocoques for Cheetahs. Some ride by... Dan Thompson and only the second point that Sam Masters dropped here in the last four home meetings. The other one to beat him was Craig Cook in the Workington match. But uh, Dan Thompson absolutely superb there because it looked uh, it looked tough for him, it has to be said on the first bend when he didn't make the best of starts but he did really work his way through read it superbly and then held it superbly as well. So it's a six point margin Oxford certainly not racing away as they have done in some home matches of late. And with Dan Thompson in this kind of form, maybe he can offer a challenge to Scott Nichols, Sam Masters in each 13 and 15. Two minute warning for heat 11. We expect the interval to follow after here. And there is uh, Luke Killeen who remains in this race partnered by Scott Nichols up against uh, Jason Edwards and Alfie Botel. So Killian will go off the outside. There is one more ride to come for Jody Scott. Jason Edwards in white off the inside. Scott Nichols in red off gate two. Alfie Botel in yellow off gate three. And Luke Killeen in blue off the outside. So Oxford in front largely thanks to the two five ones in heats four and six. Nichols and Killeen in heat four over Barker, and Marston and Heaps in heat six over Barker. Plymouth containing nicely, but doing that really because of the excellent form of Dan Thompson and the fact that he's now gone back to back in heats nine and ten and won them both. And it's rides like heat ten that really do make people take notice to get the better of the experience of Sam Masters and Cameron Heaps, which has been such a strong combination this season. That was. Terrific stuff there from Dan Thompson in heat 10. Heat number 11. And it will be Jason Edwards in white off the inside gate. Scott Nichols in red off gate 2. Alfie Botel in yellow off gate 3. Luke Killeen in blue off the outside. 
Oxford six points in front. We'd like to extend that margin, I'm sure. They have their captain on track here of gate number two. Greenlight comes on there for Hayden 11. Edwards makes a good start there for the inside and Botol's gone with him and now Scott Nichols here. We're going to have to do some chasing as Edwards maintains the inside on turns one and two. Nichols goes through into second place. Botol going wide. Kenny goes into the inside of Ben three trying to pass Botel. Nichols tries the outside. Classy move by Scott Nichols. Gets round Jason Edwards. Takes the advantage and Killeen and Botel are stopping away for third. Botel trying to go back round him here but it looks like Oxford have turned that one into a 4-2 situation. Edwards giving Scott Nichols racing room and Nichols took that racing room and trying to make it round the outside. Andy Botel forced out by Luke Killeen and Oxford here on a 4-2 when Plymouth were in quite a good situation on the first turn and Scott Nichols taking it round the outside of Jason Edwards on turns three and four and Luke Killeen battling his way into third place at the expense of Andy Botel. This will give Oxford some breathing space here, take the eight points in front with four heats to go. Killeen moving in now as Edwards goes wide off Ben 2. Scott Nichols racing clear out in front. The Oxford skipper is still unbeaten. Nichols wins heat 11. Second place Jason Edwards. Third place Luke Killeen with Alfie Botel at the back. Fine ride by Scott Nichols there around the outside off turn 4. Jason Edwards very fair with him. Left him racing room and Scott Nichols took that to go around the outside. And whilst that was going on, Luke Killeen battling away to get the better of Alfie Botel for third place and a useful 4-2 there for the Cheetahs in Heat 11 with a win for Scott Nichols second place Jason Edwards for the Gladiators third Luke Killeen and the 4-2 makes it Oxford 37 Plymouth 29 as we head towards the interval in tonight's meeting so we can take a check at the scores so far. Sam Masters with eight points from three runs. But of course beaten last time out by Dan Thompson to lose his maximum. So the maximum man so far is the captain Scott Nichols with eight paid nine from three rides. Consistency from Jordan Jenkins, three second places. Cameron Heaps paid nine from four rides. His four programme rides completed. On the Plymouth side... Uh, Jason Edwards guesting at number one with five points so far. Battling effort there and hit 11. No doubt the star man so far though. Dan Thompson, superb. 11 points from four rides. He's been brilliant and he'll be out in the first race after the interval. Botel with the race win, five points. Joe Thompson won heat two. So the riders uh, back in the pits. The uh, track staff also are there as well. There'll be some more work done on the circuit as well. So we have four heats to go here. We have Oxford eight points in front. And we have Dan Thompson putting on a great show for the Gladiators. Oxford 37, Plymouth 29, the current score with four to go. Interval time here at Cowley. We're back after the break. Welcome back to the Oxford Stadium where we have four hits to go in this Cab Direct Championship encounter. It's the Oxford Cheetahs 37, the Plymouth Gladiators 29. Eight points the gap. Plymouth holding on so far and uh, Plymouth have to say, we'll go into Heat 12 with some degree of optimism. We did wonder whether Oxford might make a switch in Heat 12, which features uh, Ashton Belgian, who has only scored one paid two so far from three rounds, and Jody Scott, who is uh, yet to score from two. And that's up against Dan Thompson, who's been the man of the meeting really so far in many ways. Uh, he is going alongside his brother, Joe Thompson. Starting gate is just being uh, prepared. Thompson twins making their way out. Peter Schrock with words of encouragement for Ashton Belgian. So uh, Killeen has scored seven from four and has one to go in heat 14. But I did wonder whether they might make a switch here and then use uh, use maybe Jody Scott in heat, in heat uh, 14. There would be an argument actually either way for a change here in heat 12. But the Oxford manager running it as per programme. What can the Plymouth Gladiators do? Quick word between Dan Thompson and Joe Thompson. You've got to believe that uh, Plymouth will bring Joe Thompson to heat 14 in place of Patrick Bake. Otherwise, uh, they look uh, like they could struggle in that race. It's all definitely uh, Oxford advantage. Oxford, I don't think there's any great alarm bells sounding amongst the Cheaters. are eight points in front, and of course they have... Massive strength in heat 13 and 15. They would expect maximum points, I'm sure, in heat 13 when Masters and Nichols take on Edwards and Barker. 15 might be a bit tougher with Dan Thompson in, uh, in town. So, uh, Oxford still in the ascendancy. 
DJ Jamie has been entertaining us with some good hits from the 80s and 90s during the break. And uh, heat number 12 is at the start line with Joe Thompson in yellow off the inside. Ashton Belgian in red off gate two. Dan Thompson in white off gate three. Jody Scott in blue off, off the outside. You have to say that if Plymouth are going to get uh, close here tonight, this is their chance to narrow that gap. Future races will be more difficult for them. But this is one where they have an opening. As I mentioned before, heat nine, we've yet to see a, uh, a big start so far from... Ashton Belgian and this would be a very good time for it here in heat 12 very tough for Jody Scott off the outside here in blue only completed really one racing lap so far tonight before he fell on the second lap of heat 2 and then a mechanical failure at the start of his second ride heat 7 Dan Thompson in white with 11 points from 4 rides an outstanding showing so far Joe Thompson off the inside one heat two and then came last in heat six lost the ride because of attack sub in heat nine to his brother we're both on track here together joe thompson off the inside Ashton belgium gate two dan thompson gate three jody's got off the outside gets underway and the thompson twins do make the start joe thompson made a good one there from the inside squeezed out belgium dan thompson goes around the outside and plymouth have exactly what they wanted here in heat 12 with Dan Thompson holding the advantage. Joe Thompson a bit wide off the fourth end, but plenty of speed there off the turn to maintain second place. Ashton Belgian in third with uh, Jody Scott at the back, and Joe Thompson now pulling away from Ashton Belgian, who is somewhat subdued tonight. Not seen the best of Ashton Belgian this evening, as Dan Thompson was certainly seeing the best of him. He really feeds on to his uh, third lap with Joe Thompson in second, Belgian in third, can't really get things going on Joe Thompson so far it's a convincing 5-1 for the Plymouth Gladiators with just over a lap to go, Belgian now beginning to wind up the outside line off their forward, a lot of work to do to get to Joe Thompson from there and very much doubt he'll make it some, some way behind and Plymouth are set to cut the gap to four points with three hits to go and Dan Thompson will keep his winning ways going Dan Thompson wins it, Joe Thompson second, it's a Thompson Twins 5-1 over Ashton Belgian in third place with Jody Scott out the back and Plymouth do get exactly what they wanted there out of 812. It always looked like a good one for them on paper, especially with Oxford not making any switches in that race. And um, Plymouth have taken full advantage to bring themselves right back into tonight's meeting, albeit they do have some tough races to go. But what about Dan Thompson here this evening? Absolutely superb with 14 from five rides. Weary celebration and a real standout show. He's ridden well here before. But tonight, he's ridden even better. Dan Thompson, only one point drop so far from five outings and a 5-1 in favour of the Gladiators. Dan Thompson winning heat number 12. Second place, his brother Joe Thompson. Third, Ashton Belgian, who's not had the night he would have wanted. Jody Scott out the back. 5-1 to Plymouth. Gap down to four points. Oxford 38, Plymouth 34. So Oxford still with a meeting to win. They are still, of course, strong favourites to do so with the strength they have to come with Masters and Nichols. But uh, anything can happen. Jason Edwards and Ben Barker going for the Gladiators in Heat 13. And then in 14, as I say, I'm sure you'll see Joe Thompson taking an extra ride there. Cheaters will have Joe Thompson, uh, Jordan Jenkins in that race along with Killeen, so they are, they are clearly stronger in Heat 14 than they were in Heat 12. So they are still strong favourites to get the job done, but it won't be an emphatic victory here tonight. We've seen occasions this season where they finish off meetings with 3-5-1s on the bounce. Even if they do that, it would be 53-37, or that would be a, a decent margin to take for the aggregate point. But certainly Plymouth faring fair bet, far better than at uh, Scunthorpe last Friday when they lost 62-28. They conceded uh, 55 at Poole recently as well. They lost 58 at 58-32 uh, at uh, Glasgow. So an improved Plymouth performance, but mainly because of the excellence of Dan Thompson, who, as I mentioned much earlier in the evening, is going to have some people looking at him and uh, pro possibly trying to tempt him for 2025 the way he is riding so heat 13 at the start line big one here for the cheaters this is their their go-to combination when they require a big result they normally get it sam masters in red off the inside jason edwards in white off gate two scott nichols in blue off gate three ben barker 
and yellow off the outside. Just two points so far for Ben Barker from his uh, three outings. Only, uh, only beaten one Oxford rider. That was uh, Ashton Belgian in 8-9. So a tough ask for him off the outside here against the power of Masters and Nichols. Edwards did make the start on Nichols in heat 11, but was passed around the outside. So after a 5 one to Plymouth in heat 12, Oxford will try and hit straight back here in heat 13. With uh, what has been arguably the best combination in the championship this season. And the combination they will hope will uh, take them to pair success here next Friday as well. 38 points to 34. Riders in line for 8.13. Masters inside. Edwards gate 2. Nichols gate 3. Barker on the outside. Green lights on for 8.13. Away they go. Great start by Sam Nuts left on the inside. Edwards on the inside trying to come through against uh, Scott Nichols. Will take it wide off the second bend. It's Masters with the advantage. Here comes Scott Nichols trying to make it around the outside. Masters will pin it tight on. Bend 3 and 4. Knows it. Scott Nichols will be there. Looks over his shoulder. Nichols does go around the outside. Gets the better of Jason Edwards. And Oxford here on a 1-2. They've done this so many times this season as Nichols takes the high line around the outside. Goes round his teammates. Sam Masters knowing exactly where he is. Edwards gave it a good go there on the first lap. Tried hard to split the combination, but it's so hard when these two have got so much track craft around this circuit. And Oxford, who did concede that 5-1 in heat 12, are looking to hit straight back in 13. And this is the combination who so often produced the goods for them. On to off up they go. Scott Nichols out in front. Sam Masters in second place. Jason Edwards in third. Ben Barker out the back. And after a scare in the previous race, the Cheetahs bite back in heat 13. It's Scott Nichols and Sam Masters with maximum points over Jason Edwards and Ben Barker finishing out the back. And Oxford rebuild an eight point margin with two heats to go. And they're almost there as far as victory on the night is concerned. And so often this season, Sam Masters and Scott Nichols doing it in the big race. Sometimes against, uh, on paper, more powerful opposition. But doing it there after a good effort by Jason Edwards on the opening lap or so. Scott Nichols had the speed round the outside. Sam Masters was controlling things on the inside. And they got the maximum points that they their team required, taking them close to victory in the meeting here tonight. 5-1 to Oxford then. Scott Nichols, the winner of Heat 13, second Sam Masters, third place Jason Edwards, Ben Barker out the back in that 5-1, makes it Oxford 43, Plymouth 35, with two races remaining. Moving on to Heat 14, and there indeed is Joe Thompson, who will be riding in white as a replacement for Patrick Bake. Bake has scored one pay two from three rides so far. The one, the one thing that's a little bit peculiar um, about this team change from, from Plymouth is that they brought in a rider to gain experience. They've made that quite clear. They're looking at him for, for the future. And yet the way it's turned out, he's had three rides in each of his three meetings. So he's been pulled out for a ride every time. Now, I know you want to try and win meetings as well. But of course, they were never going to win at Scunthorpe last Friday. So on the one hand, you're uh, wanting to give people experience, but on the other hand, you, you're, you're pulling him out every time. And the Bake looked uh, okay in his first ride here, heat three, when he very nearly beat uh, Ashton Belgium before he went round him off the final bend. Struggled a bit uh, since then, but uh, has actually lost out here on an inside gate in heat 14. As Plymouth try and keep things as close as they can for the aggregate point. Joe Thompson in white off the inside. Luke Killeen in blue off gate two. Jacob Hook in yellow off gate three. Jordan Jenkins in red off the outside. Reminded that Plymouth are still mathematically in the home for a top four finish in the Cab Direct Championship. You would have to get some long odds on it happening. Bearing in mind the fixtures to come for them and others. They'll find it hard to keep a clean sheet around the Coliseum in their final three round there because they've got some good teams heading there but they have been pretty good at home over the summer They're trying to keep themselves in touch here we know they'll have Dan Thompson going in heat 15 but uh, Oxford I'm sure will put their top two out in that one as well looking for points as things stand Plymouth need two five ones to take us to a super heat that's highly unlikely we have seen strange things happen We've seen plenty of last heat drama in the Premiership around this uh, circuit this season. At the moment, the Championship side 
not edging to victory here, but uh, just uh, made slightly hard work of it at times. 8.14 coming into line. Joe Thompson in white off the inside. Luke Killeen in blue off gate two. Jacob Hook yellow off gate three. Jordan Jenkins in red off the outside. Heat 14 then gets underway. Nice start from the inside by Joe Thompson, but Hook gets squeezed out by the Oxford duo. Joe Thompson race leads ahead of Jordan Jenkins with Luke Killeen in third place. Hook gets closed off into the third bend, and Thompson now under pressure from Jenkins as they approach the end of the first lap. Joe Thompson with the advantage. Jacob Hook going round Luke Killeen, and a very close action here in Heat 14 as Jenkins gets a line round the outside, and Hook almost got round Killeen, and we've still got the 3-3 situation, but Jenkins tries to go in hard on turn three against Joe Thompson. Won't be moved aside, and Joe Thompson still leads onto his third lap. Jenkins in second, buzzing around, trying to get round him and then maybe turn back off the second men. Lock up by Joe Thompson and then Jenkins lifts on the back straight. Can't quite make it through. It's still Joe Thompson from Jenkins who'll try the outside. Again blocked off. Jenkins is quicker, but Thompson is just about defending. Thompson again, mid-track. Jenkins on the inside, gets inside him off the second turn. Joe Thompson back round the outside. Fabio's race here. Joe Thompson back round Jordan Jenkins. Bring it stuff in 814 and it will be Joe Thompson to win it. Joe Thompson over Jordan Jenkins with Luke Keane in third place and Jacob Hook out the back. Tremendous stuff there between Joe Thompson and Jordan Jenkins and Joe Thompson gets it. My word, the Thompson twins have enjoyed their night here at Oxford tonight and Joe Thompson gets his second win of the night actually unbeaten from four rides. There's a good case for Oxford putting both Thompson twins, for Pimmons putting both Thompson twins out in Heat 15 actually because uh, Joe Thompson, excellent there from the gate and brilliant defence against Jenkins who you thought had gone through on lap four and then uh, Joe Thompson back round him on the back straight into Ben 3 for a shared heat. Luke Killeen taking the important third place there for the Cheetahs. So Joe Thompson for the Gladiators wins Heat 14, second Jordan Jenkins, third Luke Killeen, Jake a hook out the back. He was trying hard throughout that race as well. And with one to go, the 3 3 makes it Oxford 46, Plymouth 38. The Cheetahs have confirmed a victory in the meeting. And there's the score chart so far. Sam Masters 10 plus 1 beaten, of course, by Dan Thompson earlier. Captain Scott Nichols unbeaten on a paid maximum so far. Can he complete that in Heat 15? 11 and 1 from four rides and a word two. For Luke Killeen, hard working at reserve, eight paid nine from five fives. Jordan Jenkins, four second places. And you can see his frustration after the last couple of those as he couldn't quite get the better of the Plymouth rider. As far as the Gladiators are concerned, then, Edwards guessing at number one with six points from four rides. Dan Thompson, standout stuff in from him, 14 from five has been brilliant. And what about his twin brother, Joe Thompson, not too far behind, eight paid nine from four, just out blipping his uh, second outing, unbeaten apart from that. The Thompson twins have been brilliant here at Cowley this evening. So we await news of the lineup for 8 15, one race to go here, Oxford 46, Plymouth 38, and that 8 15 is coming shortly. So one race to go here at Oxford Stadium, 46-38 to the Oxford Cheetahs who have not been allowed to pull well clear by the Gladiators throughout the evening, mainly thanks to the efforts of the Thompson Twins. Heat 15 selections have been made. You can see the riders preparing uh, just outside the pits gate. It will be Sam Masters and Scott Nichols going for the Oxford Cheetahs and it will be Dan Thompson and Jason Edwards going for the Gladiators. I did wonder whether they might uh, go with Joe Thompson who at the end of it all, when you uh, look at the score chart as it has turned out, uh, has picked up eight paid nine from four rides, and therefore on that basis you say it's probably underused in the end. Um, could have taken a ride elsewhere. Difficult for a, a team manager the way the meeting goes, and Joe Thompson with two good rides in the latter stages. He had to do the tax sub. I think he made it the right, the right time. He did it in heat nine, but that did take out a Joe Thompson ride at that stage. So certainly if you've got a reserve who scored eight paid nine, you would like to think he'd take more than four rides to add to that total but uh, Dan Thompson with 14 Joe Thompson with 8 they've scored 22 out of Plymouth's 36 points sorry 38 points just uh, knocking a couple off their, their total there Oxford still with their top two Nichols unbeaten going for a paid Max Masters there with 10 paid 11 Jenkins Solid with second places throughout the night. Heaps with paid nine. And Killeen, an important contribution for him, also with paid nine from five rides at reserve, have done enough here tonight 
to maintain their situation in the Cup Direct Championship. Sam Marston in red off the inside then in this heat 15. Dan Thompson in white off gate two. Scott Nichols in blue off gate three and Jason Edwards in yellow off the outside. The reminder Scott Nichols going, going for a paid maximum here from a five ride, 11 plus one from his first four. And Dan Thompson in white off gate two has only dropped one point so far from five rides. And that's good going by any standard for any rider of any level on the way track against a team who have got such a strong uh, top two. But uh, Dan Thompson did beat Sam Masters when they met in heat 10 and it was a phenomenal ride to do it did wonder if he might go off the outside again here to offer himself more options but he said he wants to put himself on gate 2 in between and we saw Masters and Nichols get the 5-1 in heat 13 can they repeat the feat here and take Oxford above the 50 point mark certainly Plymouth faring better several away teams here this season in the Cab Direct Championship 8.15 then, out the start line, Marston inside, Dan Thompson, gate 2, Nichols gate 3, Edwards gate 4, green light for final race, away they go, this time Marston out gates, Thompson gives him a shove on Ben 1, and Nichols is straight through that gap on the inside, normally it's Scott Nichols flying around the outside, but that time he read it because Dan Thompson was eased aside by Sam Masters on the first bend, and now Oxford are away, and I can't see too much catching them here, Sam Masters with the advantage, second place Scott Nichols, Third down Thompson, Jason Edwards there at the back. And the Oxford top two looking set for their second 5-1 in succession for them after heat 13. On to heat 15, Masters leads, Nichols second, Dan Thompson third, Edwards at the back. And it looks like being in the end, a 12 point victory for the Oxford Cheaters after what's been quite a tough night for them. Never any great suggestion they wouldn't win the meeting, but certainly finding it hard to pull themselves clear. And they move on to the last lap with Masters well in front. Nichols in second place and Dan Thompson's great night is going to end with defeat in heat number 15 on the end of a 5-1 as the home riders come round the top turn for the final time it's a 5-1 from Sam Masters and Scott Nichols over Dan Thompson and Jason Edwards and Scott Nichols goes through the card with a paid maximum 13 paid 15 from 5 rides Sam Masters dropping just one point as well they have been dominant throughout much of the evening the man who was uh, Broken that domination as far as Sam Master was concerned. Dan Thompson, who's coming around just behind those two now, after a quite superb display by him, but it does end in a 5-1 to the Cheaters in Heat 15. There's the wheelie from Sam Masters and Scott Nichols, and indeed Dan Thompson behind as well, following up to the applause of the crowd. Good night for all those riders. Sam Masters, the winner of Heat 15. Scott Nichols in second place. Dan Thompson, third. And Jason Edwards out the back. And the 5 1 there to the Cheaters, giving us a final score of Oxford 51, Plymouth 39. So Oxford do go past 50 again, as they have been doing on so many occasions here at Cowley this season. It maintains third place in the league and it pulls them six points clear of the chasing pack as well. So they're in a pretty commanding situation with one home match to go and a busy away run for the remainder of August. Good nice work in the end then for the home side. They've had their troubles on the night, but they've got through okay. And the score chart reads as follows. Sam Masters with 13 plus one from five rides. Solid show once again from Cameron Heaps with seven and two from four. Tough night for Ashton Belgian, two plus one from four. Consistent night, albeit a frustrating one for Jordan Jenkins, eight from four rides. Paid maximum man, Scott Nichols, the captain, 13 plus two from five. Important showing from Luke Killeen, eight plus one from five at reserve. And tough experience building night there for Jody Scott. No points from three rides. Be interesting to see what the cheaters do in that situation as the business part of the season approaches. For the Gladiators, Jason then was worked hard as a guest number one scoring six from five rides Alfie Botel a couple of good rides in mid meeting five from four what a performance by Dan Thompson standout showing 15 from six absolutely superb from him Patrick Bate the Danish newcomer one plus one from three his first ride wasn't too bad Ben Barker bad night for him two points from four rides another good showing from Joe Thompson at reserve for the Gladiators with eight plus one from four and Jacob Hook scoring two from four at reserve, adding up to 39 points. 51-39, the final score. They will do it again at the Coliseum at the end of August. Before that, Oxford with some big meetings to come. 
Uh, Premiership action is here next Thursday with the Spires up against Kings Lynn. And of course, the Spires cannot have any room for error now in their playoff chase with the Leicester going so well. Oxford are going to need to win, I think, all of their last four matches, including having away against Leicester to have a chance there. So that's a big one here next Thursday against Kings Lynn. Next Friday is the Championship pairs. Massive line prospect there with all the Championship teams involved. And then a fortnight tonight, it is uh, the... Uh, it is the uh, Cheaters against Glasgow, always a tasty encounter in the Cab Direct Championship. That about wraps things up here at Oxford this evening. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the action. Uh, if you've been following the visitors, well, you've had a great night from the Thompson Twins and Dan Thompson, absolutely brilliant with 15 points. And for the Monarch Oxford Cheaters, a solid night's work. The captain, Scott Nichols, going unbeaten. And the playoff charge is very much on in the Cab Direct Championship. Final score then, Oxford 51, Plymouth 39. And from all of us here at Cowley, it's a very good evening.